Hey guys, thank you for watching. This is my channel, Breaking Burke. It is about houseplants and gardening here in the desert of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I have done a couple propagation videos in the past. This one, however, will be different. Uh, I want to show a another inexpensive, small uh, tabletop propagation box and a different way of propagating. Now, everyone knows that most plants can be propagated by stem cuttings. Stem cutting is usually something like this, where you take a node or a couple nodes, take that, stick it in water, and soil, and moss, whatever your rooting medium is. You can use those little uh, clay balls or whatever. And there are tons of options. But uh, today I want to talk about a few plants that I have, and there are plenty more out there. Uh, so you can always Google and see if your favorite plant can be done this way, is propagating by just a leaf cutting. Now this isn't where you go and get little tiny pieces of cells and uh, clone plants. This is different because you are taking a leaf. Uh, now most of the time it is better to take a uh, petiole, which is this branch here, the stem that connects the branch to the stalk. If you take that, a lot of times you do have a better chance of success. Just like with these, you can see I took the petiole with it. But you can do it with an, any number of plants. A lot of succulents and cacti, you can chop up and let them scab over, lay the pieces down, and you should be able to get more plants. You can do the same thing with snake plant. Uh, but like I said, I have a few here. There's actually one example here I want to show you. I got this at a swap. You guys may have seen it before. But do you notice that big leaf in the back is the biggest thing in there? And it's kind of starting to yellow now. Well, this is a ZZ plant or a Zenzi plant. And these can be propagated just by leaf cuttings. And there's a prime example. You stick a leaf in soil or moss or cocoa core is what that looks like and you can put rooting hormone they have rooting gels uh, they probably have rooting fairy dust if you look hard enough I don't know but I'm just gonna use what I have I have uh, some pre-moistened sphagnum moss here it is the long grain it's not necessarily too clean or anything but I did buy a big bale and got it at a decent price so I can pick out some sticks and leaves if I have to and this is pre-moistened, so you can see there's a stick there, another one. You just want to make sure you get a layer across the bottom of your propagation vessel so uh, you can retain some moisture and that the roots have some place to grow into. I know you can't see, that's what I'm showing you. It's maybe a half inch, maybe. But you can see most of the bottom is covered. So since I already have these cut, sorry to reach in for me. I'm gonna have to do it again. Uh, you can just, like I say, just throw it in there. I'm gonna throw a little bit of rooting gel on this one. And not show you guys apparently. No, you can see the red drip there at the end. And just make sure that the end of the petiole, the stalk, goes in contact with the wet media. Now we are going to put a lid on this, and it is a clear uh, propagation vessel, so I'm pretty sure it'll have no issues rooting. I'm going to throw another one. I don't think you need a close-up of that. Uh, and I'm just going to do this last one with nothing on it, just dry, because I want to see really how easy it is to propagate these. I know I've seen videos and stuff, but you know, it's not the same until it's yours. Uh, another one that can be done this way. I don't know if we can see it. I'll grab it and pull it forward more. My Hoya. This is a Hoya Carnosa. Uh, you can see right here. It is blushing a little. The new leaves usually do that. They'll blush out uh, like a very faint pink. Then they'll start to get their green variegation if they get green variegation uh, and then 
they just get a little bit bigger. But there is a part down here where the leaves are kind of overlapped. So I think what I'm going to do, if I can do it, is take it down here at the base because that's just hidden in there anyway. Now this isn't going to be the prettiest leaf because, like I say, it was part of the original propagation and does have some age to it. All the more reason to try and save it. You can see it does have a chunk missing out of it. That's just some staining from our hard water. But it does have the petiole. So this I am going to stick in uh, probably my rooting gel first. And then a little bit of rooting powder, just because I got it. Now, it's not like this is anything special or any rare plant. I just would like a copy. So you can see it did get coated with the white uh, rooting powder on top of the gel. And again, just nestle that in on the bottom there. Look at my little heart. It is a little crooked. But I made it myself. It's metal. I spray painted it. I seen them online and in case you haven't noticed, I like to do things on the cheap or as inexpensive as I can. And yes, I know it's not perfect. I didn't want it to be perfect. Not everything is. Not everyone is. Actually, no one is or nothing is. So uh, that's just me. So this one, I think we'll take a propagation off just because we brought it out. So. To me, this leaf here in the front, if I were to get rid of that, it would show a lot more stock. So we're going to do that. You can see these don't have much of a petiole, but I did take a little stem portion. It's not just a leaf. Rooting gel. And into... The propagation chamber. Uh, looks like I have a little more room than I thought so I might do another. I'll just take this one here in the back. Again same reasoning because it'll show more stock on that plant or that branch. I'm gonna dip it in the rooting hormone and into the wet moss. Now begonias are another plant that I have that you can do this with. Uh, so we are I've seen that they usually take uh, a good portion of the stem, so I got as much as I could where it branched off. You can see I didn't take too pretty of a leaf. I was going to cut it off anyway, so I figured why not try and propagate it. It could live on and create another nice pretty plant. Uh, this I think I'm going to take two of because there was another sketch looking leaf that I wasn't too happy about. You can see that one. Almost looks like it has fenestrations, but they're not supposed to, so. That was just, before I got it, it was looking a little, and there's another one. A little rough at the store. And I probably shouldn't have bought it because I did have to rehab it and pay full price. But, you know, we're going to do what we want. So, we'll stop mutilating the begonia. And there is another uh, species that I have that you can do this with as well. I didn't leave. I just forgot to put this at the table. We have our Peperomia frost here. Now, Peperomias are awesome at rooting. Uh, you can just, like the others, get down as far as you can to get as much of a petiole as possible and clip it. Once you have something like that, take it, dip it in a hormone, a uh, rooting hormone if you have it. If you don't, don't worry. Uh, just throw it in your propagation vessel, make sure it does stay moist. I'm going to take a couple more of these because I've been wanting to get at this thing. It's looking kind of out of shape. Though I shouldn't be judgmental. I'm out of shape too. Well, you know, 
lump these out of shape. But there's another one that you can see I put rooting hormone on and am sticking in the vessel here. Now I am going to show you this before I close it up. And remember, uh, this is just a fraction of the plants that you can get to root from leaf cuttings or leaf with petiole cuttings. It does depend on the plant, how happy it is. You have to take them from a healthy plant. If you take from a sick, dying plant, chances are you're not going to be successful or you won't be very successful. Uh, look at me dropping things. But I do want to show you this before we end. You can see there's a top leaf shot. And we do have quite a bit of cuttings. There's cuttings under cuttings. But we're trying to get roots. We're not trying to get upper growth. So you can take up as much room as you want as long as they get some airflow. Now this lid is just a solid lid. I will leave it on there like that because I want humidity. If I see that there's too much, I can always come through and pop it open and turn it. Or just pull it off a little like that. Just so you get some airflow and some humidity uh, escaping and it's not too humid in there. But a lot of these plants love humidity and they will grow faster, root faster, the more humidity. Just make sure, I mean, it doesn't even have to happen, but if you can, open it and burp it. Burping it, just open it or slightly lift the lid so you can get some airflow exchange, get some good air in there and let out all the fresh oxygen. Well, get some carbon dioxide in there so they can breathe it in and let out the fresh oxygen that they produce. And they'll be happier for it, they'll grow quicker. Uh, I have seen people just do a vessel like this, close it up and forget about it and go back and they got a tangled mess of plants in there. So do keep an eye on it. They do uh, their thing pretty quick. It's not gonna be an overnight thing, but I'd say two to three weeks, you should definitely have some type of growth on these. They will start super tiny. It'll take a long time to get a plant. But if you can end up with something like any of these from a leaf cutting, why not? I mean, it's worth a shot, you know? Uh, thank you for watching. Sorry for the long video. I guess I was super excited about sharing this. Uh, see you tomorrow.